Beautiful souls, do you have a prayer request or want us to send you healing energy today? Would you like us to be praying for your friend or loved one? If this is you, go to worldslargestprayernetwork.com to submit your prayer request. And while you're there, please sign up to join our team of prayer warriors. The angels say prayer not only opens you to miracles, raises your vibration, and helps you heal, but the more you pray, the more God's presence is felt on earth. Feel your angels' love as they surround you right now, and listen for the positive, loving messages your angels intended specifically for you in today's episode. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host and author, Julie Jancis. And today we're here with Brianna, who has multiple different angel stories to share. Brianna, welcome to the show. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> Yay! Um, tell everybody where you're at in the world. So I'm in Tampa, Florida, uh, but I'm originally from the Chicago area. Um, Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to have you take it away and share your stories. Okay. So um, my papu, my grandfather, he passed away in January 2019. Um, and this is the first angel story. Um, it happened only a couple months after he passed. So um, I was getting ready to move from Orlando to Tallahassee in January 2019. And my grandparents were going to help me drive down some furniture from Illinois and help me move. Uh, but in early January, before my move, my papu passed away while riding his motorcycle. It was a beautiful Chicago day, 53 degrees and sunny <laughs> in January. So he was out riding. Um, so, but luckily I was able to spend quite a bit of time with him during the holidays. And the last thing we did together was actually take apart that furniture that he was going to drive down for me. Um, well, so the funeral happened and I drove back to Orlando to move myself up to Tallahassee. And about a month after I had moved my Yaya, which is my grandmother, uh, she finally made it down with her girlfriend instead of my papu to bring me that furniture. Uh, we had a lovely visit and she was basically fulfilling the trip that they had planned to take. Um, and the night before she was supposed to leave, I had asked her to like, sew up some clothes for me that. I had some holes in because, you know, she's always very helpful with that. <laughs> um, so, and then the next morning, right before she left, she was getting her purse together and these toothpicks had jumped out uh, that she kept in there for my papu. She said, well, I guess I don't need these anymore. Um, you know, I don't know if your boyfriend uses toothpicks, but you can have these. I'm like, okay, sounds good. And um, so when she leaves or her, her friend left and then I go back into my bedroom and I see the toothpicks sitting on my dresser and I'm just imagining like a Ziploc bag full of toothpicks or something, but they were in like wrapping from like kind of how you get chopsticks from a Chinese restaurant. And so I picked them up <clears throat> and on the back, it said, welcome home. And I instantly just knew that that was my papu saying like, welcome home. Sorry, I'm not supposed to be there or sorry, I can't be there, honey, but I'm here and welcome home. And so I called, you know, she was on the road for like three minutes and I called her. I'm like, Papu just sent me a message. Um, yeah, so that was pretty cool. And I mentioned the sewing thing because she had said that she goes, and you know, I was in that same pocket of my purse the night before to get your sewing kit. She goes, and the toothpicks could have jumped out then, but they didn't. She goes, they jumped out that morning right before she was supposed to leave, which was the perfect time to give me that message. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Yeah, that was my first one. And that was kind of like the first moment that it was just so easy. I just knew, you know? Yeah, 100%. And I love it too, like, because it was just that message and it's so him. Yeah, and that was, you know, because he was supposed to be there and help me move the furniture. And it was kind of a sad thing that he wasn't there because he passed away a month earlier, unexpectedly, kind of tragically. So, yeah. So then the next one, about six months or so after he passed, um, I had a dream and my whole family was sitting around in the dream. We're at the, 
my grandparents' kitchen table, which is the table we had all birthdays and dinners, and we're all sitting there talking, and I'm sitting kind of um, on the long end of the table at the end, and he's on the opposite side of the head of the table at the end, and I'm looking at him, and I'm like, he's not supposed to be here. Like, he's dead. What is going on? And I'm looking at all my family, and I'm like, hello? Does anybody else see him? Papu's here. He's dead. He's not. What's going on? My family is just passing food, chit-chatting, not paying attention to me. I cannot get anybody's attention. And so (laughs) frustrated, I turn to him and I'm like, so how's the afterlife? Like, how is everything? Are you, am I doing okay? Do you have any advice for me? Like, I've missed you. Where have you been? (laughs) And and he didn't say anything to me. He just kind of sat there with like a stoic, like monk like expression on his face, just kind of happy, just watching us all. And um, he had a silver cross around his neck, which he was wearing what he would normally wear, but he had a cross on and he didn't wear crosses. Um, His sister passed away when she was like 29, had just had a baby. And so after that happened in his life, he like stopped believing in God and everything. And that's what he always told me. He's like, when you die, you're die. There's nothing left after that. And I was like, okay, Papu, sure, whatever. And I never believed him, but that's what he said. And so I thought it was really cool in the dream. That was, I think that was like the symbol of like, I was wrong. There's an afterlife and here I am. (laughs) But I thought the overall symbolism was so cool. Like I could see him and he could see all of us and he was with us, but the rest of my family couldn't see him which is kind of true in real life. So, but it was just so validating. I'm like, he's here. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm going to have you come go through the other one, but then I've got messages for you. <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next one, this was a dream, but it was more of an astral travel because at the end it was just so intense. Um, So this was probably about a year later and actually about a year ago, uh, I had started a new job and I was waking up really early for work. And so when I got home from work, I'm like, okay, I'm going to take a nap. That way I can kind of have my evening and just not be so tired. Um, So I put my yoga mat down in the living room. I put on like a guided meditation just to put me to sleep. And then, um, you know, like put something over my eyes. Like I was full nap mode. And next thing I know, I'm dreaming and I'm going down the street with my boyfriend and there's like a shop and we open, we go into the shop and had like all these things I had been looking for. And I'm like, oh my God, this is everything I've been looking for. And then next thing I know, there's an empty chair next to the shop owner. And the next thing I know, my papu just swirls into appearance. And I was never really looking directly at him, but it was, it was more on my peripheral, but he started talking and I was like, oh my God, that's my papu. Like I heard his voice crystal clear. Everything else was kind of fuzzy, but I heard his voice and I knew it was him. And once I placed it, I like grabbed my boyfriend's hand and I'm like, that's Papu. He's here. He's he's right here, like in shock. And um, he was just talking to the shop owner like, oh, yeah, that's my granddaughter. You know, she's a lot like me. And, you know, I was supposed to be there, but I wasn't. And I think he was referring to the first angel story. He was supposed to bring the furniture down with me. But, you know, and he just kept talking to the shop owner like he knew everything that was going on in our life. Like, yeah, like he was up to date with everything. And then the next thing I know, my boyfriend is like pulling me away, like to leave. And I remember putting my hand on the door to go out. And I remember thinking, no, I don't want to go. I want to stay here with him. Like, I've missed this man so much. I'm not leaving. And And I, after that, his voice got clear again and I could, I remember hearing him and I don't remember what he said, but I just, it got clear. And then the next thing I know I'm being pulled away and I walk out the door and then I'm in dream world screaming at my boy, like my boyfriend's walking in front of me in the dream, like slow down, do not realize just what happened. Sobbing because I just saw my dead grandfather, but like, oh, you know, all the emotions. And, um, next thing I know I'm woken up into real life (laughs) and, uh, I was laying down and my boyfriend was over me and I, I, you know, kind of hugged him, grabbed him. And I mean, like my back arched and it was like, (gasps) and I just started sobbing. And then I remember after that, he showed me his back. He had like scratches from my nails on his back. Like that's how intense it was being woken up. And um, 
another podcast I actually listened to for, by a medium. She says one of the differences between dreaming and like having an astral travel is that like, she's like, it's almost like your soul can slam back into your body after. And I imagine that's kind of what happened because it was just so intense. And oh my God, it was just so awesome. Like so cool. <laughs> like I, I was love it. Him. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I love these stories so much because your grandfather was just coming through to you in such a clear, amazing way. And I read through the angel stories when I can, when they come through um, to the email, but I also have a team that reads th through them as well. And so I never know like who's going to be on the show that day. I just kind of let it be a surprise. But this morning while I was getting ready, um, and I don't always hear from my grandfather on my mom's side. I always always hear from my dad. I always hear from both of my grandmas. Um, but he's a little quiet sometimes. And I've talked about that before on the podcast, but it wasn't on my Spotify playlist. I went and I added it in afterwards, but I heard um, the song Sitting on the Dock of the Bay this morning, which is my grandfather's um, song when every single time I hear it, I'm like, that's him. He's coming Aww. through. He's got messages. That's awesome. <laughs> so, um, so it's definitely like grandfather day, everybody who's listening, tune in to your grandpas on the other side, Aww. whether you're, they're your birth grandpas or families that you were, you know, kind of cultivated along the way. Cause some of us have those pseudo grandfathers and they're saying they're coming through as well, but your grandfathers have messages for you today. And Brianna, for you, um, he was talking about how there's really an infinite number of souls on the other side, and there is really an infinite number, too, that wants to come through for a human lifetime. And he said, when you stop and really think about that, it means that your life here is special and that you already won the lottery because you're here right now. And he was showing me as you were talking that there's a lot of things that you felt feel called to do career wise. There's a lot of direction that they've been showing you really for a long time of where they want you to go. Um, but that egoic mind fear within you is very, very heavy at times and it comes in saying things like well who are you to do x or who are you to um and your grandfather stopped and he said who are you not to and before we hopped on this call i was writing out this thing because we're going to disney next week for spring break wow. and um it's so wild that Disney was able to channel this mouse within his imagination, mm -hmm. his mind's eye, and that within a hundred very, very short years here on earth, Disney has become what it is today. But it all started with one human soul allowing the visions to come into them that were truly coming from the other side, being channeled through and follow with faith that they're seeing what they're seeing on purpose and your grandfather came in and he said you always have to remember that your life here is special and that god placed a special gift within each human soul to create and to serve in a way here that leaves this place better for everyone else and he said that what you're going to build is not from vanity. It's not from ego. It's not even your ego bringing through that grand vision. It's that God universe source needs to use your life to come through and build something that's going to make this place better. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, for sure. So do you know what they're talking about? Yeah, I think so. I've had um, some struggles with my career. Um, I know what I'm passionate about, but you know, it's the good jobs don't always pay the bills. 
So it's kind of that, that struggle, you know, it's like, I've, uh, so many more people that are doing God's work that should be able to make a living basically. And so I've been kind of in and out of that, but yeah, going back to education, working with kids basically, (laughs) but building, building something, I think having to do a lot with like plants and nature and gardening and teaching kids about, um, the earth and food and all that good stuff. It's amazing. Um, You know, when I'm in sessions, a lot of times I'll see two energies that are parallel right next to each other. And it's oftentimes, I I also watched this documentary probably almost 10 years ago that talked about how when you look at people following their path around the world, most people aren't able to follow their joy and make a living at it right from the beginning so those parallel lines are two jobs at the same time Mm, for a bit of time until we get our dreams lifted up and off the ground so it's the job that pays the bills and kind of finances your dreams and then building out your passion project at the same time yeah. And I'm lucky I have the job where I think pays the bills and have so much freedom. I'm in sales, so I can take any day off I want. But uh, I guess it's kind of getting the nerve back up to again to kind of get back into the passion and get it rolling. <laughs> yeah. The other thing is, and this is a lot for empaths out there, and I've said it before, but it's worth saying again, because it's a very big message that spirit brings through a lot with empaths and visionaries and channelers, a lot of times what you will see in your life as you're bringing in God's vision for your life is the end picture first. And it feels like a lot. It makes it feel like Mount Everest, like, well, how could that ever be achieved? How could I ever do that? And and so a lot of us get so much anxiety that we pack the dream away. We think it's too big. We can't achieve it. So we don't even try. And what God Universe Source is saying to everybody here today is that we have to understand the rules of how this works. And what happens is when they show us the ending first Brianna here's where you're going in life this is what it's going to be it's not to overwhelm you it's because inspiration is as tangible as going into the store and purchasing something inspiration what inspires you comes packed with this energy that's going to fuel you forward to it so so spirit is really trying to get that message out there to the world that instead of letting inspiration overwhelm you or block you from starting allow it simply to carry the energies that you need to achieve it Yes, that's a, that's super helpful. And it's a good, it's a good reminder. So I'm sure there's a ton of people and in me too. I'm like, I see all these great things. I'm like, how do I get there? (laughs) How do I start? Yeah. All right. One more. I don't believe that we live in a a world anymore, like where you have to have children. Um, But do you and your husband or or person not uh, have kids yet? Yeah, I'm actually um, five months pregnant. (gasps) Okay, because your grandfather, do you know if it's a boy or a girl? I don't. I have a really good feeling it's a girl. Um, I'd like to know, but I don't know yet. Okay, Uh, because it's a happy, healthy baby, and sometimes Mm -hmm. we have more coming through, right? Um, But your grandfather's holding this beautiful little girl on the other side, (laughs) and um, he's so excited for you and for um, your person because he said you he makes me feel like you've almost dreamt of her your entire life (laughs) yeah i think so yeah oh my god you're gonna make me cry before i do my next story (laughs) oh um yeah for sure when it comes to your grandma is your grandma more religious 
Um, a little bit. Not. I mean, she believes. Yeah, she's yeah. a little bit spiritual. A little bit was religious, but. You don't have to tell her about this, but he keeps saying that he's planting within her mind that <laughs> she's going to get the baby like this gold bracelet or this like, it's like a nice piece of jewelry, Aww. but it's almost like for a small child and it's this bracelet, but I can see this like, uh, you know, and like a bracelet has like a plate, almost like this one that I'm wearing right here. Mm -hmm, yeah. Almost like a, a bar on it, like a plate. Um, I can see it inscribed. So he keeps talking to her, like oh. to bring this through to you, this present. But it's, yeah. it's her inspired by him on the other side who's wanting the baby to have this bracelet. I could so see that. And she's done that before with our birthdays, get little gold jewelry with ins inscriptions. <laughs> That's great. Oh. That's awesome. Yes. So exciting. So I know you have another story. I'm going to let you take that one away. Okay. So um, this was about a year ago, uh, July, 2022. So, um, you know, just listening to your podcast all the time while I drive and I'm like, all right, I'm going to write down all my angel stories because I got to get them out. And so then that way I could submit them because I've listened <laughs> to you say it, you know, all, how many times. And so I uh, got out, you know, and I, my laptop and I went to start typing all the stories, but I ended up just kind of crying instead. And, you know, cause you miss them. Um, and so, yeah, that was the night. And then the next morning, uh, I went to work and I was just so tired. I don't know why. One of those days I had a, an extra cup of coffee and I just could not. My eyes were closing on the road. And I'm just like, all right, I need to wake up. This is ridiculous. Um, but, and then I had noticed like a bunch of stuff was annoying me and irritating me. And I just had a short temper, you know, just not a good morning. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm going to do this one last stop because I'm in sales. So I'd go around and make stops. Um, I've been putting this one off forever, but I'm like, I'm going to do it. And so I'm driving in and I, right before I go to pull in this song, one of my favorite songs, uh, surrender by cash cash comes on. And it's a beautiful song about surrendering, surrendering to love and everything. And the song came on and I just lost it, started bawling my eyes out. So I, I park and I just, went on to ugly cry for about 15 to 20 minutes. And I realized why I was so tired and annoyed that morning is because I was sad. I missed my papu. And um, yeah, so I was crying for quite a while, you know, a little angry, hitting my steering wheel. Like, why did you leave me? I'm so mad at you, you know? And uh, finally I got myself together, I called my boyfriend. He's like, go make that sale. You got this. I'm like, okay. So I get my eyes all in puffy and get ready. And so I drove over to where my client was. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me back up. So as I'm ugly crying, I'm thinking to myself, you know, if Papu's here right now, he'll play Don't Fear the Reaper by Blue Oyster Cult. And the song didn't come on and I was whatever. <laughs> so and then I pulled over to my client and uh, as soon as I put my car in park, the song came on. And I was like, up who? I was begging for you, crying. And now that I got myself all together and I'm I'm good now, now you play the song. So I'm like, whatever. <laughs> I, I pause it and I go inside and I, I talk to the client. And then when I came out, I, you know, finished the song, sang it full blast on the way home, was in the best mood. And it was just so cool because that was the first sign that I had ever asked for and I got. And I thought it was cool too, because it was like through technology, you know, on, the, on my Spotify. And I had looked, it was, my Spotify was um, on shuffle of all my liked songs. Mm -hmm. And I had over 2000 liked songs. So out of 2000 songs, that song came on. That's amazing. Um, yeah. And I thought it was, it made me think about something else you've said too, is that, you know, when you're in such a low vibration, they can't come through. And I thought it was so amazing. As soon as I was like, okay, I am actually good. The song came on, but yeah. not while I was, while I was crying. So as soon as you lifted your vibration, you were able to hear and see what he was showing you. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, there is no doubt he is an expert at bringing through those signs and, um, he will always be with you. Um, 
he's excited for you guys and this baby. And <laughs> do you guys talk about getting the other house? Because there's one more thing that he keeps talking about, um, which was the move. Yeah, we just moved into a townhouse. Um, my mother was trying to help me buy a house, but the market in Florida is just insane. And yes. so as a first time home buyer, it's everything is just really depressing. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's trying to lift your spirits on that too, because he says that he's got the perfect house for you guys. Um, but it has to happen at the perfect time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I, I want to say it like this, my husband and I bought our first house. Um, I want to say for like 309 back in, gosh, what was that? Like, 2008 right before the collapse and and then when 2008 like financial collapse hit over the next three years the house depreciated 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 to the point where um it was down to like worth 199 on zillow for a while and so you there are times where like you can get stuck in real estate for a while and like you can't get out of it like if you buy at a high point you kind of have to sell at a high point and you have to wait for that market to come back around and he said it's all set up so that you get the house at the exact right time and that you're when you want to sell it you'll be able to sell it at the right time too does that make sense I mean, it's, um, yes, but logistically, no, <laughs> like in my heart. Yes. That makes a ton of sense in my brain. No, it does yeah. not. Yeah. But, um, it's kind of one of those things where it's like 15 years later, you'll see exactly what he means. Cause you have to go yeah. through a couple of those financial cycles right. to be able to kind of know. Um, but here's the takeaway. Okay. He has the perfect house. He knows, you know, exactly how many kids you're going to end up with oh, the, <laughs> you know, the amount of room that you guys are going to need. And he has it all lined up. He doesn't want you to get into like a bad situation. So he has protected you guys so that you get the house at the perfect time. Mm, that's awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Okay. Brianna, thank you so much for being yeah. here today and for sharing you your for beautiful, beautiful me. stories. Thank you. Thank you for everything, Julie. And just keep on doing what you're doing, please. <laughs> thank you. Um, everybody listening, I channeled through this vision the other day and um, I was asking God Universe Source some questions and they said, Everybody who listens to the podcast, Julie, is willing to be your earth angels. And if you ask them to tell one other person who it resonates, tell them about this podcast, even show them on their phone where they can find this podcast, um, that what I'm building next we're going to kind of prepare for as a community. So if you're willing to do that, I would so appreciate it. If you just be my earth angel and share this podcast with one other person who you think would just love listening to what we share over here. I'd so, so appreciate it. Thank you everybody so much. Thank you, Brianna. And I hope everybody has a warm, blessed day. Beautiful soul. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Julie. You know I'm all about connecting you with messages from your angels and loved ones on the other side. If you've been listening today and you're super excited and just have to know which angels are around you right now, who's connecting with you, and what messages they have for you, go to theangelmedium.com. Register for a session. You can do a reading with me or a member of my team. And we can help you in making sure that your angels are doing the very best they can to support you and guide you to your best life. If this sounds like you, virtual sessions, they're only offered on my website. Sign up today. And if you're the person who's really excited, you can sign up for my Angel Reiki School to become a certified angel messenger. 
That's for the healers among us who feel called to grow their intuition to the max and serve humanity with their gifts. You'll learn Reiki, mediumship, how to deliver angel messages, and how to get clients. That's the Angel Reiki School at theangelmedium.com or DM me on Instagram at Angel Podcast with any questions. Before you go, connect with your angels by placing your hands on your heart. Take a deep breath. Imagine a doorway filled with God's unconditional love is right in front of you. Step into that love and feel it as it fills your body, chakras, and auric field. Now ask your angels, what would you have me know today? And open yourself to the positive, loving messages they have just for you.